This video is a request from one of my subscribers who wanted a collage or collage of individual photographs. So this is the form of format I think she wants. So I'll uh, close this off and we'll open up our GIMP. First we need to make a brush of our own. So we go to File and New and in the, the width we'll type in 472 and the height is 336. Now that is equivalent to inches by 6, six by 4 image. So we click on that and that makes our little image there. Go to the rectangular select tool and give yourself a reasonable margin and select around like that. Now we need to right click the layer, the image, and add an alpha channel. That'll give me a transparency when I hit the delete key. Now I go to select and I invert my selection. I come over here to my patterns uh, dialog and I choose this one here which is called dried mud. I go over to my bucket fill tool and fill with a pattern. I click on that uh, radio button, move into the area and fill it with that pattern. While it's still selected, I go to Edit and Stroke and I'm going to stroke it with 6 pixel width and I'm going to use the foreground colour which is black. So I'll click on Stroke and that's given me a little picture frame. Now I'll go to Edit and I'll copy that to the clipboard. I'll close that off now, I don't require it anymore. When I open my Paint dialog, you can see it's paste pasted as a a little layer there on the clipboard so it's a temporary brush. This uh, tutorial is going to use a temporary brush. Now I'll go to File, New and I pull down the templates and I'll make a, a reasonable size one, that one there. Click OK. I go to my Blend tool and choose a gradient. I like the gold one. Move it down to gold and just drag a colour across the top. Now I go to File and Open as a Layer. This is, I'm going to load my images now. It's best to have a, a folder with your images all ready to go. I have this one here. I open that one up. Now it's far too big for our image, so I go to Layer and Scale the Layer. In there I break the chain. I click on the little chain there and break it. And I highlight that there. And now I type in 472 and then highlight the height and I type in 336 and then click scale. There's my image now. Now I click on, I've still got my brush there and I go to the brush tool and in there the brush is far too small. Now I just click in that area. You can see now it's hide the cursor is very close to the to the characters, uh, numerals, I just hit the delete key and remove those and type in 472 and hit enter. Now that makes my little brush the exact size of our image. I move carefully, place it over the top of the image, like so, bang, and I've painted the image. Now I've got my move tool, click the radio button there, move the active layer, and just move it up into the area there. Go back to file open layer, open as a layer because I've got my um, little folder open, click on that one once again it's far too big, we go to layer scale, break the chain type in 472 highlight the bottom numerals and type in 336 and then scale. Go to my brush tool. Now the size is already selected and I've got my brush, temporary brush selected. And I just click over the area thus. Go to my move tool and move it somewhere over the top there. Now I'll continue on with this real fast and it's the same thing routine over and over. 
So I go to layers, open another image. layer, scale, break the chain, 472, highlight the numeral, 336, scale, paintbrush, place it carefully over your image and go to move tool and move it up in an area there. OK, starting from the bottom, click on that one, go to Filters, Light and Shadow, and we put in a drop shadow, just to give it a third dimensional appearance. The dialog may load down the bottom, bring it up, move the offset to about 15, and once again 15 on the Y, and then click It's better working from the bottom up because you move up to the next image. The lower, the lower one is the drop shadow. So we just move to the next top image, go to filter, and repeat the drop, uh, drop shadow. The settings remain the same. And the very last one, which is the... Uh, Lorikeet filter repeat. Because this image was far too close to the side there, the drop shadow moved it slightly. So I need to use the crop tool, so I'll just go and crop that because um, it's already cropped the, uh, the layer. Let's move it in a fraction. There we go. That's our job finished. We can right click a top layer and then flatten image. So I hope that's uh, helped you all and answered your question. You'll find all the instructions on the link below in that description where it goes to a PDF file in a web page.